Hey everybody, it's Ron Evans, and we are here for another market update geared towards Orange County. And today is November 30th, 2021. So this will be our last November market update for 2021. Next week, it's all about December. Can't believe we've actually made it that far, but here we are. As always, everything I go over today that I read from and, and to help you digest comes from Stephen Thomas and his snapshot called Reports on Housing. Again, it's completely local to Orange County. What I'm going to cover is a high-level overview, a macro level, if you will, of the Orange County real estate numbers, housing numbers. If at any time you would like something more specific to your city where you live here in Orange County, you can hit me up at realestate101 at ronevansrealty.com. Text me at 949-929-2270. Or simply leave a question or comment either on the podcast or on YouTube. And I will reply and send you what you need. Let's dig right in, shall we? The title of this week's report, Inventory Catastrophe. He writes, Stephen writes, for years, there have not been enough homes on the market, which is 100% true. But the trend has only grown worse with COVID in the historically low interest rate environment. Our inventory is running on empty. The inventory is at an all-time low, and it's only going to get worse and drop from here. He writes in part, the active inventory has been running on empty all year long. There are fumes left in Orange County's housing market tank. <laughs> That's a fantastic analogy. Has anybody ever run out of gas <laughs> while driving? You ever had that experience or gotten to the point where you're close to running out of gas and maybe your car is just choking along and you're just trying to baby it in <laughs> somewhere? Oh, my goodness. Uh, that cracks me up because that just brings back a total memory. Anyway. So there are fumes left in the Orange, in Orange County's housing market tank. The inventory hit an all-time low in June at 2,214 available homes to purchase, and then it dropped below that record low at the end of September and has been falling ever since. Well, if we're anything, we're consistent. In just the past two weeks alone, the inventory plunged another 19%, or 336 homes, the largest drop of the year, and now totals 1,457 homes, signaling the start of the holiday market. Woo! Merry Christmas! when both supply and demand sink to their lowest point by New Year's Day. How many of you were hoping to have a brand new home under the Christmas tree? <laughs> it's fantastic. He writes, prior to COVID, in the three years prior to COVID, basically from 2017 to 2019, the inventory averaged 5,851 homes. In 2020, it averaged 4,188 homes, which was 28% less. And this year, it is at 2,190 homes, 63% less. That is correct. It has averaged less than 2,200 homes. This is across the whole year, not just this point in the, in the year. Last year's 3,469 homes to end de November. So just a year ago right now, we had 3,469 homes was the lowest reading by far since tracking began 17 years ago. Again, I've mentioned it before. Steven's been at this for almost 20 years, and he's an economist. He's got that, uh, that tricky math and numbers education. He knows what he's talking about here. 
today's 1,457 home inventory is 58% lower. So it's less than half of what we had this time last year. And this time last year, we were kind of in a panic. The three-year average prior to COVID for the end of November is 5,359, a jaw-dropping 238% more, an extra 3,900 homes available, more than triple what's available today. That is a big difference indicating just how starved the housing market is for inventory. Whew. He goes on later here to write, building an inventory was already challenging prior to the pandemic, but when the pandemic hit, fewer homeowners opted to sell. There's reasons about that. I've covered it in the past, and I'm happy to cover it again if you have a specific question. In 2020 through October, there were 2,545 missing for sale signs compared to that three-year average, 7% less. In 2021 through October, there have been 2,245 missing signs, another 6% less. That may not seem like many for a year, but at this point, every single missing for a sale sign further intensifies the inventory plight. Another contributing factor is that demand has been extremely strong due to today's historically low interest rate environment. According to Freddie Mac's primary mortgage market survey, say that 10 times fast. Today's 3.1% rate may be higher than mid-August's 2.77 or the first week of January's 2.65, but it would still be a record low in comparing it to any time prior to COVID. Remember, prior to COVID, we were basically seeing the previous kind of baseline was about 4%. So you were seeing rates, if you could get someone that was like at 387 maybe, or 365, or you know the high, high, high threes, you were doing really, really good. We are 1% below that right now. For perspective, in 2019, mortgage rates averaged 3.94%. Low rates instigated the fire sale atmosphere in both 2020 and 2021. Further contributing to demand, there were more potential buyers reaching the prime first-time buying age of 32 years old than ever before. We call them millennials. It started last year, he says. This year is even stronger, and it continues for the next several years. It is the strongest first-time homebuyer demographic patch on record and is occurring right now. Millennials, he writes, are doing what humans do. They are leaving the family home or multiple roommate situation, getting married and having babies. Millennials want a piece of the proverbial American dream, just like every generation prior. They are adding pressure to the demand side of the equation for housing. Later, he writes, today's expected market time has dropped to 20 days. That's it, 20 days. That's across all price points in Orange County, from low to high. Anything below 60 days is considered a hot seller's market. When it drops below 40 days, it has reached the level of an insane market. You've heard me say those words before because he's written these words before. At 20 days, housing is nearly indescribable. It is where every home is greeted with a ton of showings. Sellers get to call the shots during the negotiation process. Multiple offers are the norm and home values are rising rapidly. Here's his bottom line, he writes. The inventory gauge is pointing to empty, and it does not look like there will be much relief anytime soon. The Orange County housing market has only grown stronger over the past few months and has been at an insane level since August of last year. Do not expect anything less than insane for quite some time. Now, I don't know if he's going to write about this or not, but what do you think a remedy or a medication might be for this? I'll throw something out there. It's interest rates. I think that if interest rates tick up a little bit, and the key there is tick up a little bit, they can't, it can't be a drastic jump. But if they were to rise incrementally over the next nine to 12 months, I think that will grease the wheels a little bit of the market and, and get inventory to loosen and increase. 
Um, we've been artificially low for so long and just to have gone even lower that we've been preaching for five plus years that the rates are eventually going to go up. <clears throat> but I think people are still trying to time it, time the market, and they're not really believing that the interest rates are going to go up. I think if they do start to finally tick up, that will get people to finally act and understand, that, oh, they are going up and they might not come back down to where they're at now. So I need to go ahead and get this ball going here. But I digress. Let's get back to the report. The next section we're going to talk about is active listings. The current active inventory plunged by 19% in the past two weeks. A fifth. The active inventory shed 336 homes, as we mentioned before, in the past couple of weeks, which is down 19%, and now sits at 1,457 homes. That's just frightening. The lowest level since tracking began in 2014. It dropped below 1,800 for the first time ever two weeks ago. Ever. Did I say ever? Ever. And it just dropped below 1,500 homes. At this point, how far it drops from here is anyone's guess. These are uncharted waters since 2015 and has dropped on average by 19% from the end of November two years in, meaning the inventory could drop to below 1,200 homes upon ringing in a new year. It's typical to have a drop here at the holiday time. That's totally normal. It's the amount that it's dropping right now and the fact that we were already low and it's the pattern is continuing. That's the concerning part. Repeating last year inventory was at 3,469 homes, which is 138% more or an additional 2,012 homes than what we have today. The three-year average prior to COVID is 5,359 homes, which is an extra 3,900 homes or 268% more triple compared to today. Needless to say, there were a lot more choices back then. For October, there were 441 fewer new for sale signs in Orange County compared to the three-year average from 2017 to 2019, or 15% less. Every single missing sign magnifies the inventory crisis. Demand, which is a snapshot of the number of new escrows over the prior month decreased another 4% the past couple of weeks. Now in the previous housing report, it had also decreased 4%. So now two weeks over two weeks, it's decreased 4% each time. That's pretty normal. It's down from 2,322 to 2,221, shedding 101 pending sales. On average, demand drops 8% to start the holiday market, yet heightened demand continues even through the hall, even though the holidays are here, he writes. Eventually, the limited supply of available homes to purchase drops even further. The number of new escrows will drop right along with it. So it's not that people won't want to buy homes, but because there aren't any homes for them to buy, that will drop the demand numbers along with the supply numbers because they're going to kind of go hand in hand. You can't buy what you can't buy. Last year, demand was at 2,621 homes, which was 18% more than today. The three-year average prior to COVID is 1,969 homes or 11% less than today. Where well, there was a COVID blip that we experienced in 2020 it's been explained before, but that was because we had such a delayed start to our selling season. We didn't start until June, July timeframe when we normally start in the spring because of the lockdowns. So it delayed our holiday start. The current, as, we, as reported before, the current expected market time, which is the number of days to sell all Orange County listings at the current buying pace dropped from 23 to 20 days. It's lowest since tracking began 17 years ago. At 20 days, it is an extremely insane hot seller's market. The three-year average prior to COVID was at 85 days, much slower than today, but still a slight seller's market. See, again, 
even before COVID, we were always talking about, hey, we don't totally have enough homes to be on par, which we need about 8,000 listings, I think, to be at a flat market. We were running about 5,500 to 6,000 homes. I think at the peak, maybe hitting 7,000, but still under. We were always at a, a slight seller's market for quite a long time. And it's just done that or done that depending on which side of the aisle you're on. But even back then, 85 days, holy cow, that was great. Now let's talk specifically luxury. These are homes that are priced above 1.5 million. In the past two weeks, the luxury inventory decreased by 67 homes, which is down 11% and now sits at 536. It's second largest drop of the year behind two weeks ago. So the, over the last two reports, which are two weeks and two weeks, we've gone down, I think it was 12 or 14% the previous, and now we've gone down another 11%. And we are now at the lowest level since tracking began in 2004. Same song, new verse. Luxury demand also decreased by 30 pending sales, which is down 7% and sits at 386, its lowest level since February. With a larger drop in supply compared to demand, the overall expected market time for luxury prices above 1.5 million dropped from 43 to 42 days. He's going to get into it here in a little bit, but several years ago, and I've said this before and time and time again, it was not unheard of to see homes priced in the above 2 million, above 4 million be on the market. Like the average market time was 300 plus days, 400 plus days, 500 plus days. And that was totally normal and it was expected. No one freaked out about it. Listen to where we're at right now. Year over year, luxury demand is up by 90 pending sales or 30%. And the active luxury listing inventory is down by 633 homes or 54%. The expected market time last year was at 118 days. So we just said a minute ago that currently we're at 42 days. Just a year ago, we were 118 days, so three times higher. We were at three months, now we're barely over a month, five weeks, which was still exceptionally hot for luxury, but nearly three times where it stands today, indicating just how unbelievably hot the luxury market is right now. Okay, here's where it's going to get crazy. For homes priced between 1.5 million and 2 million, so introductory luxury level, the expected market time decreased from 25 to 21 days. For homes priced between 2 million and 4 million, the expected market time decreased from 42 to 39 days. For homes priced above 4 million, the expected market time increased. Now, this is the first time we've had an increase, but it's mostly due to supply. It increased from 94 to 103 days. At 103 days, he writes, a seller would be looking at placing their home into escrow around March of 2022. To break it down further, across all price ranges, luxury and non-luxury. If your home is priced below $750,000, so an introductory starter home, first time buyer, whatever, your expected market time is 16 days. You are currently 27% of the inventory and 33% of the demand. And it was at, and market time was at 28 days this time last year. So you're almost half. If you're in the 750 to 1 million, Current market time is 14 days. You represent 20% of the inventory and 28% of the demand. And you were at 24 days expected market time last year. So not quite double or not quite half of what it was, but still crazy. Now here's where these next couple of ones are the ones that are really blow your mind. At a million to one and a quarter million, your current market time is 13 days. You heard that right, just 13 days. This seems to be like the craziest price range. These are like, a, it's like a move up price range for people. You represent 9% of the inventory, but 13% of the demand. This time last year, it was at 40 days, expected market time. So you're a third, less than a third. Now the 1.25 million to 1.5 million, you're at 16 days expected market time. You represent 7% of the inventory and 9% of the demand. This time last year, 47 days. 
Who would have ever thought? And again, the 1.5 to 2 million, you're at 21 days. You represent 8% of the total inventory and 8% of the demand. But this time last year, you were at 63 days. So you're at a third of what you were last year exactly. Two to 4 million, 39 days expected market time. You represent 14% of the inventory. So you're actually the, th you're a pretty significant amount of the inventory out there, two to 4 million. That's, that's unbelievable. But only 7% of the demand. This time last year, market time was 126 days. You're a third. Now listen to this, and this is where you're going to hear what I was talking about, how we used to experience things several years ago. It's not even several years ago. It's just a year ago, according to this. If you were at 4 million plus price range, your current expected market time is 103 days, as we mentioned before. You actually represent 15% of the housing inventory, which out of all these price points is the third, third largest amount of the inventory, currently only are 3% of the demand. But that doesn't matter because this time last year, your expected market time was 322 days. Almost a full year. Like I said, though, several years ago, it would have been higher than that, maybe 450 to 500 days. Whew, that's a lot. Don't you think? Such a lot to digest. Where do you think we're going? If you happen to be listening to this from another part of our country or even another part of the world, and you're tapped into the real estate market where you're at locally, please let me know what you guys are seeing. Are you seeing numbers similar to this? And take away the take away the price points as far as like, you know, you can't equate um, a $2 million property in Orange County to a $2 million property somewhere else. I totally get that. But you have your own uh, price breaks as far as what's considered like a, a first time home buyer introductory to a, a move up to a luxury to a super high luxury. Your price breaks might be different, but are you seeing the same pattern um, as far as uh, market market times and, and uh, share of demand and everything? Or do you even have someone that helps you break it down? I'm really curious. I'd love to find out. Please, 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 please comment. Last thing we'll chat about here is distressed properties. I know that you hear it a lot on some media outlets that distressed is going to be a huge deal. Maybe in 2022, you know, we had the forbearance issues of 2020. A lot of the forbearance is now gone. If not all, all gone, hasn't made a difference. And there's reasons behind that. Biggest reason is, is that how is, people that own homes today typically have enough equity to ride out a market correction or an issue with if they did forbearance and they really didn't need to or maybe didn't know what they were getting into, which happened quite a bit. They have enough equity where they can refinance and, and be able to keep their homes, which we didn't see in 2007, 2008. The loans were a lot different back then, back then, as well as the fact that people just owned multiple homes and had zero equity in any of them. So that when uh, the market corrected and crashed, which was due to finance, not necessarily to housing, or it was due to housing, not necessarily to finance, um, that's what created the distressed home availability back then that we are likely not going to see. In any case, let's cover it. Distressed homes, which it, the category he uses for distressed homes includes both short sales and foreclosures combined, made up only one half of 1% of all listings and 0.3% of demand. There are only four, one, two, three, four, foreclosures and three short sales available to purchase today in all of Orange County. So seven total distressed homes on the active market, which is down three from two weeks ago. We had 10 two weeks ago. Now we have seven. Last year, this time last year, there were also seven. 
So you see what I'm saying? I already kind of explained why. Forbearance, people took advantage of forbearance in 2020. A lot of that stuff expired in late 2020, um, or at least by the summer of 2021. We don't have the we don't have the NODs. We don't have the defaults. We should already be seeing them, I think. Maybe more is still to come after the first year, but don't count on it being anything. I mean, if that's your if that's your business model that you count on, I wouldn't count on it. There were 2,778 closed residential resales in October, which was 17% less than October 2020, which saw us have 3,359 closed sales. For the year through October, there have been 30,097 closed sales, 23% higher than last year. So we've sold 23% more homes so far this year than we had this time through this time in 2020. September marked a 7% drop compared to September of 2020. The sales to list price ratio has been holding steady at 100.5%. That was the same in the previous report. Foreclosures accounted for just 0.29% of all closed sales and short sales the specifically accounted for just 0.04%. That means that 99.7% of all sales were good old fashioned sellers with equity. That's it. That's today's market update. We'll have another update in two weeks as these reports come out every two weeks. Um, I will say that he offers reports for San Diego, LA, and San Bernardino counties now, Riverside, San Bernardino. I do not post about those because I don't specifically target those areas, even though I have sold in those areas. But if you like information on any of those other areas outside of Orange County, basically in other areas of Southern California, please let me know. I'm happy to record episodes like this that encompass those areas as well. All these reports come out every two weeks. Again, easiest way to get a hold of me, drop a comment in the whatever podcast method you're, you're listening or on YouTube in the comments, and I will reply to you. Or you can email me at realestate101 at ronevansrealty.com. Or you may text me at 949-929-2270. That's it for this Tuesday. We'll see you again soon.